Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the May 2015 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. So as per usual, let's take a read of the information. So it says, the bank statement and cash book, bank columns only, for all the Elwin for the month of October 2014 are as follows. So we have on this side the bank statement and we have across here the cash book bank columns only so let's take a look at these items so the bank statement so the debit column represents payments or outflows from the bank statement and the credit column represents inflows and the balance column as you can see is updated after every transaction so the balance at the start of the month was 900 when we got money from T. Simeon, and we got it from T. Simeon because it's in the credit column, so it's increasing, it's an inflow. So 900 plus 150 is 1050. And then it says here, what does it say? Cash sales deposit. So money came in. Again, it's in the credit column. 1050 and 850 is 1900. But then we had a bunch of outflows. We had vehicle loans, 1700, which carries the balance down to 200. Standing orders, 1000. So now we are, we're at negative 800. That's an overdraft debit transfer so we transferred money out 825 carrying our overdraft down further to 1625 or you could say carrying the overdraft up to 1625 rent we have to pay rent 2300 so now we have a bigger overdraft uh we also have a credit transfer so finally somebody sent money back to us 4000 so that brought us out of the overdraft but finally the bank charges of 400 dollars carried us back into overdraft well Let's take a look at the cash book and see what went on there as well. So the cash book now started off as well at $900. So the opening balance in the bank statement and cash book match. So then we have T. Simeon, which we saw across here as well. T. Simeon. So those two things match. Then I'm seeing an 850 in sales here, and that's going to match with an 850 across here as well. But I'm seeing a D. Elwin for 500 but I'm not seeing a DL win here. And then there's also this credit transfer, which is in the bank statement, but not in the cash book. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Whoops. All right. So that was on the, on the inflow side. Let's check the outflow side. So we have a light and power company outflow there, which I'm not seeing in the debit column here. We have a vehicle loan for 1700 Right, I'm seeing that here, so that corresponds, that matches. I'm seeing a rent figure here for 2300 which I'm also seeing in the bank statement. All right, so what's going to happen is two things. We have to update the cash book first of all, and then we're going to do a bank rate because as you can see, we have items in the cash book that are not in the bank statement and vice versa. And then on top of that, the ending balance in the cash book is an overdraft of 1780 Whereas the ending balance in the bank statement is an also an overdraft, but it is 325. So those two things don't match. So we have to reconcile. We have to explain that we know why those things differ. That's what reconciliation means. Explaining and getting things back on the same level. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to update the cash book. So we're going to start off with the balance as per cash book, which is an overdraft, which is brought down on the credit side because a bank overdraft is a liability. Now, Let's take a look uh, on, the, on the debit side here, which is the inflow side, and in the credit column here, which is also the inflows. So we're looking for stuff that is in the bank statement, but not in the cash book, because we have stuff in the cash book, we're looking for what's not there in order to put it in. So we, I'm seeing the 150 and 850 matching on both sides, but there's this $4,000 item which needs to be put in. So that's an inflow, it's gonna go on the debit side in the cash book. So let's, uh, let's unhighlight those things now. Let's talk about the credit column in the cash book, which is the payments column. And we have to compare that to the debit column in the bank statement, because that's the outflow payment column as well. So we're looking again for items that are in the bank statement that are not in the cash book, because we are updating the cash book. So I'm seeing the 1700 and 2300, uh, but I'm not seeing this 1000, this 825 and this 400. I'm seeing it in the bank statement, but not in the cash book. So those are payments, so those will go on the credit side. So in no particular order, other than order of appearance, 1825 and bank charges of 400. Now, when we add up everything, we're gonna see that we're still gonna have a balance, sorry, it's gonna be 4,005, which means that we need a $5 balance 
carried down from the debit side and then brought down on the credit side. So we still end up with a bank overdraft in the, <clears throat> sorry, the updated cash book. But that still doesn't equal to our 325 balance here in the bank statement. So now we have to do a bank reconciliation statement, which is akin, just like how we updated the cash flow, we're putting in information to it that was missing from it. We're going to kind of do the same thing with the bank statement, the bank rec. We're going to look for information in the cash book that is not in the bank statement and put it in the bank statement. So let me just rearrange my screen to pull up the bank reconciliation statements. Okay, so I did two versions of the bank rec. I did one where I started with the balance as per cash book, and I did one starting with the balance as per bank statement, just to show you that it doesn't matter which way you do it, you're going to get the same answer provided you follow the correct protocols. So let's start with the balance as per cash book. So what's gonna happen here now is we are looking for stuff in the cash book that is not in the bank statement, and we're kind of taking it out of the cash book. So if, if it was a payment, we're gonna add it back because it, it, it wasn't taken out of the bank statement, so we're gonna add it back in the cash book. And similarly, if we have receipts in the cash book that are not in the bank statement, we're going to subtract them from the cash book because again, they're not reflected in the bank statement. So let's take a look and see what happens here. So the first item I'm seeing is less bank lodgement. So bank lodgements are uh, amounts that we have, we received, and they are debited in the cash book, but they're not showing up on the bank statement because maybe the bank has taken time to process it or whatever the case is. So on the debit side in the cash book, I'm seeing a 500. Now, again, we could compare everything else. The 150 and 850, those were both seen and matched with items in the bank statement, right? So this 500, this was the only, sorry, right? This was the only item that was present in the cash book, but not in the bank statement. So we're subtracting it. So because again, it's an inflow to the cash book that is not matched by an inflow in the bank statement. So to make both things reconcile, we're going to take it out of the cash book. So the information in the cash book will re more reflect what's in the bank statement. So that was the inflow side. All right, let's take a look at the payment side. So I'm seeing here three items. Uh, I'm seeing a lot more here. But again, we're looking for this stuff as in the cash book, but not in the bank statement. So I'm seeing the vehicle loan. I'm seeing the rent, but I'm seeing light and power company. So, so this item here, this 180 was a payment made from the cash book, so it was taken out, money came out, but we're not seeing that, that same transaction reflected in the bank statement. So because of that, we're gonna add it back to the cash book balance, and that's going to, it's gonna reconcile the balances, as you can see here, right? The balance as per bank statement now is 325, which matches with the overdraft here in the bank statement, 325, right? Now, I kinda of prefer to do the bank, right? Starting with the bank statement balance, the, I think the question actually, actually, in this case, asks you to start with the cash book balance. So you need to know how to do it both ways. The bank statement balance, starting with the bank statement balance, to me, is easier because you kind of follow the same rules and principles or the same process as you did when you were updating the cash book. You're looking for stuff in the, well, if you were updating the cash book, you're looking for stuff in the bank statement that the cash book is missing and then you're putting it on the same side. If it was an increase, you're debiting the cash book. If it was a decrease, you're crediting the cash book. So with the, if you start with the bank statement balance, again, you're going to look for stuff in the cash book that the bank statement doesn't have. So that means if there's an increase in the cash book, you're going to add it to the bank statement balance. If there's a decrease in the cash book, you're going to subtract it from the bank statement balance. Simple and straightforward. So let's take a look. So the first thing I did was I added bank lodgement. So the same, sorry, let me unhighlight this item here. So the same 500 that was an inflow in the cash book that was not present in the bank statement we're gonna add that to the bank statement balance to make it reflect or more on par or to reconcile it with the cash book balance. And similarly, the bank lodgements, sorry, the unpresented checks, my apologies, right, those were added. So that was the 180 for the light and power company. So that was a payment that came out of the cash book but didn't come out of the bank statement. So to kind of, to reconcile it to make them equal, you'll subtract it from the bank statement balance. And guess what's gonna happen here? you're going to end up with the same minus five, the same overdraft, which is the balance as per, oh, sorry. This should say updated cash book. I'm just gonna put UCB for updated cash book, right? So you have your pick, whichever method you find is better. To me, you could stick with that one. But again, if the question specifically asks for one over the other, you need to know how to do it that way. Okay, I think we have some journals to do. Let me rearrange my screen and we'll take a look at those.
So this part of the question reads, the following transactions were recorded in the books of Orvi Elwin for the month of April. So we have credit sales made to the following. Jack Long, Mary King, June Phillip. Credit purchases from Up Top Limited, Harry and Sons, Sealy's. Okay. And uh, the 16th, we have two, well, we have a return on the 16th from Jack Long. Jack Long return goods and June Phillip return goods costing 150 Now, what is the question? One, it says record the above transactions in the correctly labeled day books provided below and on, page, in, and on page 19, include folio references. So this is one of the few times they've ever asked for folio stuff. So the first one they gave us was the purchases journal. So credit purchases are recorded in the purchases journal. The purchases journal only records credit purchases. So we're just gonna put those items uh, with the date, the name and the amount, and we're gonna put a total, right? Oh, right, I see a little error here. Let's fix that. Okay, cool. And of course, it says total credit purchases. It could say total credit purchases for the month, transferred to the purchases account in the general ledger. <coughs> and then the folio. So anybody from whom you make a credit purchase is a trade creditor. It's an account payable. It goes in the creditor's ledger or the purchases ledger rather. So you're seeing where I see PL and you're seeing dot, dot, dot. You could put whatever number you want there. So because in the purchases ledger, which is a book of accounts, each account is supposed to have its own page. So it's almost like indexing or cross-referencing, almost like a table of contents. You know what book to look in and you know what page to look on. So that, that's the purpose of the folio. All right. And then, well, for this one here, the, the purchases, the total credit purchases, that balance is transferred to the purchases account in the general ledger. So you're seeing GL. And again, you can make up whatever number. The number was arbitrary. It really didn't matter. Let's, okay, so let's take a look at the, um, the credit sales. Well, yeah, the credit sales and the sales journal. Okay, so we made credit sales to Jack Long, Mary King, June Phillip. So let's just put everybody in there one time. Jack Long, Mary King, June Phillip. Total is that. Right, so again, you're seeing the date, the details, folio amount. So again, when we make credit sales to customers, those customers now owe us money. They are trade debtors. We will find their accounts in the sales ledger. The sales ledger holds the accounts of all of our trade debtors. So that's why the folio says SL. SL is the book, and you're saying dot, dot, dot. Again, you can make up whatever numbers you want to put. You can put 019, 125, whatever the case is. Or you can make up a different code, but no, don't get too fancy, don't get too, too technical, right? Keep it simple. And, and again, the last, the total here is the total credit sales for the month transferred to the sales account in the general ledger. So that's why you're seeing GL, right? Let's take a look at the returns journal now. So it says Jack Long return goods costing that, June Philip return goods costing that. So you're just going to put those. Now, we would have references to Jack Long and, and June Philip above in the sales journal. You make sure to use those same numbers here. Okay, please don't use different numbers because they are the same accounts you would have used earlier. So they need to be on the same page. And the returns in words account also needs to be in the general ledger. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for this question. If you have any questions on this item, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you. To check out more videos, click on these links up here. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. Check out my website for some free payaway handouts. Check out my Facebook page. Um, the link is in the description below for some free um, POA math and AMAT solutions. And as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Bye.